The Outer Banks is not just rare earth in the Carolinas. It is unique on the face of the planet. A fragile sandbar barely poking above the swells of the Atlantic Ocean, a finger of sand stretching for 250 miles. Ruled by wind and water, in time, the sea always washes away the foundation humans try to build. The Outer Banks is rare earth, period. Let your soul and spirit fly into the mystic. Well, here's something you've probably never seen on the beach. I know I have never in my whole life seen this. A fence on the beach all the way into the water, all the way up on land. Well, I'm standing in Virginia, and my photographer Andy is standing in North Carolina. But this fence is not designed to keep people out. It's designed to keep horses out, wild horses. There are parts of the Outer Banks where even roads are forbidden. You have to come up the beach to go home the ones that live down here. Our guide, Gene Snow, says the beach is the only way in or out. We've come here for a rare glimpse of the wild horses that have roamed the Outer Banks for 500 years. We're going to try and find a spot that we can go back in there and find them. Gene and his wife Donna run the Corolla Wild Horse Fund. Their job? Save what's left of the herds. Hey, you didn't happen to see any of the wild horses back this way, did you? We've seen them from the air, stallions protecting their mares, feeding on sea oats, drinking from freshwater ponds. There are only two ways these descendants of Spanish Mustangs could have gotten here. They were brought here by the first settlers, or they swam ashore from shipwrecks, and it's probably a little of both. From the air, it seems, they're everywhere. But on the sand, we drive for hours and never see a one. We decide to call it quits and head back, and Gene spots some tracks. And the larger hooves of the adult animal, the one closest to him is probably his mama, because they stay pretty close together. Mama stays real close to the foal. And then, the rarest of sights. <laughs> <laughs> A herd of wild horses has come down to the ocean, right in the middle of vacationing families. Oh, he's going to roll in the sand. Oh, this is great. This is the nature. What it's all about. It catches people completely off guard. It's awesome. It's so pretty. They just come on the beach. I'm, I'm just astonished. It's weird. <laughs> Seeing the signs around the Outer Banks, we can watch out for wild horses, and we're like, oh, we hope we get to see some. So we're really surprised when we encountered them here on the beach. I guess they're like any family on the beach, enjoying the breeze, youngsters playing in the sand. It was neat, especially seeing the little baby calves with their mothers and the whole herd sticking together and the, um, the, male, the male leading them down the beach. It was a neat, neat experience. I mean, they look like you could just walk right up and pet them, but yeah. when you get too close to the mares to stay, it could get a little antsy and it could be dangerous. Gene knows if he can educate the humans, there's a better chance to save the horses. <laughs> All right, that's good. How you doing? There used to be thousands out here. Now there are only 140. It's very exciting, but we're in there, we're taking over their habitat, so then it kind of makes you feel guilty. You know, like here we are enjoying it, but we've taken their home away from them. The simple truth is the more houses we build, the more people that come, the less room there is for wild horses. It's like their natural habitat. That's how they live their whole lives. It shouldn't have to change because just people want to build houses. You can build houses anyway. <laughs> And while most seem enthusiastic to help the horses survive, there is no solution yet. Gene and Donna know the answer is not far away. They just hope the horses can survive the ride till we get there. <laughs>